Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's do a quick update on the 2500. So I don't think I mentioned it often or enough, but my buddy Cameron here built a fantastic 480E with a hardened input and hardened output, and they even cleaned it and baked it and painted it, and made all the insides and outsides look beautiful. And then they just made the mistake of sending it over to me to do what I want with it. So, my buddy installed it for me the other day. My buddy Mitch shoved this 480E in on his lift before I had my lift. So, incredible. Thank you, Mitch. And here's the 480E. And then also we tossed in the Ryan Jans converter. And I know I posted some clips and some short things of using it and doing uh, rolling burnouts and everything else. Look at the nice raccoon on that thing eating a Kit Kat. So... We'll move on to the next upgrade. So I would say pretty much the main event here was waiting to install these triple fuel pumps until I had the transmission and converter and everything else in so I didn't hurt my known good for a Lady E parts to build for the Mustang. So picked up the bed, put it on the Kia trailer, pulled it outside. And then here we have the stock tank, which previous owner did apparently, I didn't know he did this, but he drilled out the, it looks like the map sensor pressure hole, and did a feed, drilled holes in the basket, and it, part numbers match, there was a 450 in there, I wasn't sure if it was a 400 or a 450. And this is the Horsepower Headquarters HP HQ Billet Hat prototype. He has already changed this, I think, like three, four times now. And he was almost embarrassed for people to see, like, this older prototype he had sent me a while ago. So there's what the pump's hooked up. That's what the return hose on it. And there's the sending unit screwed in. And I ended up lowering this uh, because it seemed a little bit off. And I realized that that float should be pretty much at the bottom of the socks. So started wiring it, started running the feed, started uh, trying to clean up my wires and everything back here and cutting out all the containers and evap cans and wiring and hoses and stuff I didn't need. One of the neat ones here was this particular 90 degree fitting. I wasn't sure if it was going to clear the alternator. It was very close by all estimation. I'll throw a clip in real quick. Sorry vertical phone video I was sending to friends. All right moment of truth. Moment of truth here. Oh oh boy. Now, can you tighten the fuel line on that? Kinda. We'll see. Man, I can't believe it doesn't hit. What I got here, not relayed or fused yet, is two 450s. This is my power wire. May not be big enough, but you know what? It, it's, it's fine. So, here's two 450s at battery voltage. Let's uh, line this shot up. Wow. It's basically a garden hose at battery voltage for the doubles. Imagine that at 14 volts and then three of them. So excuse the cricket, but I got the output for the fuel pump set up at 50% TPS to test it so you can see it says fuel pump two, and then when I roll in, watch fuel pressure go. They're very, very quiet in the tank, so whatever. Say hi to the cricket that has been chirping since 8 p.m. And it is almost midnight. Shout out to you, bud. Cheerleading. So, I did, this is the feed. And then I'm hitting the front of both rails with that super close boy right there. It's actually up against the plastic alternator shield, but luckily there's some give. Then it feeds that side, and then it goes into the single unit that I had in the back, like the T fittings that come with the faster rails. And then I'm like, how do I want to tie in this ethanol sensor without screwing myself? I don't have inline eights, and I don't want to, I mean, it really wouldn't restrict the return. I don't care. But I just eliminated everything from the car. So this was where the stock quick disconnect went in. And then that's where I was feeding the rail prior. 
So that's my new half inch return on a dash six. It's a half inch barb to dash six adapter I had. So that's my return. I shouldn't need much of a return because I'm only running one pump and then under high horsepower uh, using the others. I've done it many times. So this is feeding uh, 3 8 Earl's push lock all the way around to the flex sensor. And then I have a a bolt and a weird fitting I got off of the EVAP system on the tank, plugging the other side. So we'll see how well that works. Should work great. It's going to fill that entire hose before the return actually flows. So that should always have good ethanol content. Uh, that's what I'm gonna use to limp myself by. I'll probably, you know, put it on the return here or something uh, easier and then just plug this guy later. But if that ends up working, we'll just all laugh about it. All right, so we got my wonderful informational explanation videos thrown in there. Helps a lot for some of the things I'm sure. So I had it up here on the lift and I did my feed return and vent in order there. That's showing off that tight 90. And then I did, so yeah, that's feeding the front. What else do we got here? So yeah, it's a little bit messy now and I ended up changing all the relays and everything you can see there too. So there's a nice view of before and after. And then this is cleaned up before and after also. That's just a shot I took with the bed off sitting in the backyard. And then a neat one here is the blue, the dark blue is the boost coming up. And then the light blue is the fuel pressure. So for part of my test there, I turned the pumps on very early, earlier than I would need them. And since I do have that smaller return orifice on the regulator, turning on the pumps early will obviously spike the pressure. So... What I did was set it up to come on at like a pound or two, and when I rolled into boost, you can see fuel pressure jumps like 18 pounds when the pumps come on. So that was just my test to make sure that the pumps were also coming on, and I'll show a quick clip of it rolling into the throttle on like four, four or five pounds of boost. And uh, it's uneventful and whatever, but it's just a high gear, slow roller to make sure the pumps are working. So then what we did is we went to the dyno. So here's a funny addition to the dyno footage is that I drove a hundred miles before I put the truck on the dyno and it wasn't a nice cool day but it wasn't super hot either. I don't want to have a debate with people who live in the desert. I don't. It's hot up here. So I drove this guy around a couple hours. I put a hundred miles on it and then I went to the dyno and smashed out some hits. So what you'll see here is me returning my, not my, returning the transmission jack to Ryan Ackerman all the way up north, me coming back down, and then eventually throwing the truck on the dyno. So there's a nice shot of it sitting on the roller, and here's a nice one of the engine bay while it was on the roller. So if you were listening, the first hit there sounded a little funny because I screwed up my lockup settings. So you can see the little bump there on the blue line that says 505 horsepower. So it really made about 476 on less than 5 pounds of boost. And the little bump there is the converter lockup happening later in the hit. So what's pretty cool is it makes, you know, 470 or so on four and change boost and then the next hit there I went right for 
14 pounds, which made 725. And then before I made the higher boost pulls, I yanked about four or five degrees out over 10 pounds. And then I continued on because I wanted to make sure my fuel system worked before I hit it with a bunch of ignition and everything else. So I pressed up to 19 pounds. We'll show that one quick. So now you can see on 19 pounds, it made 791 and a little bit over that, it was breaking up on ignition. So I figured that the plug gap, since I've never ever checked it and the guy I bought the truck from put the plugs in almost three years ago, uh, we I would have to investigate them, but it was hot and I made a bunch of dyno hits. I didn't have much time, had to go back home. Uh, figured it was too hot to work on also I'd let it sit and pull the plugs and yeah when I I pulled the plugs and a bunch were high like 28 one was 30 uh, you know they were all too high for that amount of boost and Kyle had said when he installed them that they were low 20s so they over the three years there with the heat they must have walked open a little bit so I knocked them down to 18 and I'll go back and hit it with some ignition and everything else. But a, a quick note for everybody is that this truck unlocked with the stock tranny and converter made 740 on 16 with appropriate amount of ignition. And if you look at the plot here, you can see how bad it falls off up top. It's because it has <laughs> less ignition than it would like in it. So we'll move on. But the big takeaways we were looking for here is at 19 pounds, it was pulling, you know, I added some fuel in there. We got amazing fuel pressure. It is rising. It's doing great. On 19 pounds, 16 degrees, it's only using 70% of the injector to make almost 800 rear wheel on 76% alcohol. All of those numbers are adding up, so the fuel is there, everything else is looking good, and it was a great day for uh, horsepower and everything in general, right? And here's a nice clean shot of that 791. So, looking to improve on that, obviously, next time we go. So here's just a clip of me driving it. So it's really neat to see how normal and quiet and you can just drive this thing with the cutout and everything working correctly and then I have a clip coming up here where I make a hit you could tell I, I don't floor it it shifts short because I'm not flooring it but I show you what it's like to drive it you know half throttle three-quarter throttle on six pounds rolling into it in second gear versus turning the boost controller on and running about 12 pounds and you roll into it in second and it's very controllable and I mean it's it's moving pretty good but feels kind of slow to me but uh, then you can see when I just roll into it in second on 12 pounds it just annihilates the tire and you have to pedal so much that it short shifts up into third and then once it hooks in third uh, you know the gear will go like 160 so it's, it still has good acceleration but obviously it's not show stopping or anything but very very happy with it can't wait to make some hits with this thing on the street with like